Dauntless RTX. Believe it or not, this isn't a meme and could actually realistically happen. And I'm going to use this type of headline to have a good excuse to actually talk about the new technology coming out for PCs, because I guess you do technically have to put me in the enthusiast PC space, especially when these big hardware launches come out. But let's talk about Dauntless potentially becoming an RTX game at some point in time. And this could be made possible because of some software that is coming out because of the RTX 4000 launch from Nvidia. Earlier this week, there was a special from Nvidia that was unveiling multiple new programming technologies as well as the RTX 4000 series of graphics cards. And a lot of the presentation was kind of corporate fluff, not really aimed at gamers, but there was a very, very interesting segment of that presentation. And that's because of a mod tool that they developed as part of their Omniverse program, which will essentially allow pretty much any game to become an RTX title. So far, they have achieved that through modding. For example, they completely changed up Portal to to have a Portal RTX version that will be coming out relatively soon. And they also touched up one of the old Elder Scrolls titles, aka the, the stuff before Skyrim. So the concept of this is really cool, essentially being able to go into an older game and to be able to completely change how the game is rendering. It's not that modders haven't been doing that already, because they obviously have been, but for there to be a potentially very high quality multi-game graphics development tool like this is honestly a great, great addition, regardless of what Whatever else you think about the RTX 4000 series. And I'll talk about my personal take on that in a second, but let's talk about Dauntless RTX still here. While it is plausible this could happen at some point, I don't think Phoenix Labs themselves are going to really dedicate any resources to this, and that means this would be up to the community to make this sort of thing, and I'm not entirely sure if we have a dedicated enough individual to want to go out and learn how to use Nvidia Omniverse and make this sort of thing happen. I do actually see that being a thing though for Monster Hunter World and Monster Hunter Rise, because even though the modding community is relatively small, small for the Monster Hunter titles, you know, Rise especially, but World is basically just cosmetics and, you know, overlays. But even with that being the case, I would say the Monster Hunter community has a higher chance of having somebody with the skills and the desire to do such a thing. Add that on top of, you can already mod the game pretty easily, and I definitely think it's more likely for those. But let's say we did have an individual make this mod for Dauntless RTX, I would be curious to see how we would go about that. Would we have to bypass the anti-cheat software every time, or would we show Phoenix Labs, hey, yo, this this is literally Dauntless RTX, do you want to, you know, change some code around to allow this mod? Or would you potentially want to bake this mod into the base game as a sort of toggleable feature? But the question we gotta ask ourselves is, would Dauntless RTX even really look better? Maybe if you were to redo the textures to make them higher resolution, maybe that would be sort of more your thing. But as far as the lighting elements go, Unreal Engine does a pretty good job at light sources and rasterization. And it's kind of like super easy to go into Unreal Engine, set up a light source that casts shadows, because I've even done that. But you know, the people who are into ray tracing and know what to look out for when using it would probably be able to tell the difference between Dauntless as it is now and a Dauntless RTX version. But I'd say the general population of gamers just don't really care about it too much right now, especially seeing as it makes you take a hit to your frame rate. Ray tracing might become more of a standard of a little bit further down the line because it seems like it's a little bit friendlier to developers to use, but obviously no developer is abandoning rasterization just yet because, you know, you wouldn't have a market for your game then. But yeah, Dauntless RTX is certainly something that could happen in the relatively near future, but I just don't really see that being too imperative on anybody's mind. And even if it were to become a thing, I just don't think enough people would care. Although that could be a pretty good marketing strategy, huh, Phoenix Labs? You know, you make Dauntless RTX and, you know, you are one of the few RTX titles, so people might check it out if they have an RTX GPU. And seeing as it's a game not completely driven by competition, I think people generally do land more on the graphical side of things instead of the performance side of things, so some people might actually want to enable it. But enough about RTX, let's get into the ruckus that this presentation stirred up. Because a bunch of people, including myself, are not particularly happy with certain things in this presentation. Obviously part of that is Nvidia just basically lying about their performance claims, because marketing! Basically if you take some of the few benchmarks that actually seem comparable, in the majority of games you're probably getting a 1.6 to 1.7x increase from rasterization performance from the 4090 over the 3090 Ti, I think. But when it comes to the 4080 16 gigabyte and the 4080 12 gigabyte, which is basically a glorified 4070, the performance basically scales down until the 4080 12 gigabyte is basically even with the 3090 Ti, it seems like. And the performance here isn't really what people would be complaining about, right? A 4070 or 4070 Ti can match a 3090 Ti, and the only losers are the 3090 Ti owners. But what people are mad at is NVIDIA calling these both 4080s when one has an objectively worse 
first GPU in it, and the consensus seems to be that they definitely named it that way, such that they would be able to charge an exorbitant price for it. The 70 class GPUs for the past two generations have sold for about $500 MSRP, but the 4080 12GB is pretty much objectively a 70 class GPU, and they are instead charging $900 for it, which is a $400 price increase from the last generation, which is about what they did with the 4080 as well. And this goes way beyond adjusting for inflation. And I am pretty much looking to go all out on a PC upgrade this year. However, I don't want to feel like I'm getting ripped off. If the 4080 16 gigabyte was $900 to $1,000, I probably would have still considered getting that. But I'm definitely not going to want to pay that kind of a price for a 4070, basically. And now I'm kind of firmly in the camp of, I'm going to wait for AMD before I make my final decision. I'm not sure if it was derived from a leak or was just speculation, but I saw a chart where a 7900 XT could potentially be coming out for $1,000. And that there would be two SKUs above that trying to compete with the highest cards that Nvidia has. And if that's true, I feel like I'm pretty likely to go with an AMD graphics card this time around. Because while you wouldn't be getting the full spec of that primo quality silicon, you would still be getting the primo quality silicon, unlike for $1,000, you're getting the third best quality silicon from Nvidia. And worst case scenario, if I absolutely needed Nvidia software or drivers for something, I still have a 3080. And an additional thing that has irked me at least in the wake of this presentation is DLSS 3, with their whole AI drawing new additional frames sort of thing. I'm not convinced that this won't be complete complete trash, at least in this first generation of things. An NVIDIA engineer has said it does cause additional latency. And when you think long and hard about it, I think theoretically it's literally impossible to do that sort of thing in real time. Unless that is the game does render your surrounding environment and not just the things on your screen. Because if the game isn't loading the surroundings behind you, let's say, if you do a quick 180 turn, you either A, need enough latency such that the AI can catch back up to the game engine, because if the things aren't rendered then they need to render in and that means you need an actual frame to render in before you can load in more AI frames or B it would have a massive hitch such that it would go down to 20 FPS let's say like their cyberpunk example so you'd be getting 100 FPS in a straight line and then if you do a sharp turn then you're going to dip down to 20 FPS and that is not going to be a smooth gaming experience whatsoever and on some games this would just feel really really bad because you know I believe it's not the game engine that's going to be running faster such that you're getting you know five times the fps but it's just you know your display is doing five times fps but the game engine is still running at that 20 fps so that would basically be four out of five frames that you can't do an input on and that would just feel stupid. But yeah, I kind of have to see to believe this one because otherwise I'm just going to call this complete BS. Or maybe my concept of how things render in video games, you know, obviously it depends on the game how exactly things render, but maybe it's flawed such that I see this in a way where I would say, yeah, that's kind of complete BS except for in these scenarios. But it has been confirmed that it does add extra latency, so even if that was like 10 milliseconds, that's like the entire latency of a system, so people will definitely feel that. But yeah, I'm not sold on the extra drawing frames of DLSS 3 right now. And that's my take on the GPU situation going down right now that literally nobody asked for. I guess if I'm going to do a whole tech ramble here, I'm going to talk about the other hardware that I'm planning on getting as well. For the CPU, I'm probably going with the 7950X from AMD. I think non-negotiable this time, I'm going with the highest CPU I can get. And there is a source from Intel that has said they're basically going to be trading blows between the 7950X and the 13900K or whatever. Not that I am an AM dick writer or anything, but I think I'll probably just stay with an AMD CPU if that is the case. Just kind of a general opinion on them as the company right now I think they're trying to position themselves as a confident but not overly cocky company between the CPU and GPU battles. Motherboards I'm not too sure about right now. Obviously none of those have released just yet. I think currently I'm thinking the low end of X670 because even if I do that then it's CPU and motherboard combined for a thousand dollars and then the graphics card alone will probably be a thousand dollars and that's basically just three items that are going to be the combined total of my other system here and I think after tax they would actually get there. Still undecided in the realm of CPU coolers I'm not sure if I want to go with an AIO because I haven't done liquid before, but I will probably be looking for a higher end cooler as well, so probably somewhere between $100 to $200 on that. And for power supply, I'll probably want to make sure that I go for the ATX3, which has the PCIe cable, because there's news of those adapters being pretty jank sounding, and I don't know if I'm going to do a whole lot of switching between my 3080 and my whatever card I end up getting, so I imagine an ATX3 power supply coming with the straight up cable might end up also running me another card 
couple hundred bucks. I think you guys get the point. I'm in for a pretty expensive PC build if this ends up happening, so I might actually end up looking for a part-time job for a couple days a week just to have an, a little bit of extra money to be able to afford this thing with. Because it seems the way things are going in my head right now, this system is probably going to end up being $3,500 to $4,000 right now. And for those of you who are like, why would you spend so much money on a computer? It's something I use literally every single day, and when you have things like that, you are kind of inclined to spend more money on them. In contrast, I do have a pretty nice car, you know, it's from the past decade, but, you know, I wouldn't be completely opposed to selling it to be able to afford some of this PC. I highly doubt I'm actually going to do that because I do like my car, but it wouldn't be completely unreasonable for me to do, seeing as I only use my car for maybe like 20 miles a week or something, 20 miles a week from my car versus 10 hours a day from my computer, you can kind of understand why people end up spending as much money as they do on computers. And now we're at the point here where I've gone completely past the video topic that was at hand originally. I don't know if I would call this a Mr. Rant, maybe a Mr. Ramble. Would you guys want to see a Mr. Ramble series? You know, basically me talking about a bunch of random topics, you know, trying to chain them together somehow in one cohesive video and completely failing. You know, it'd be pretty much like a, I'm in between video ideas right now. It would be a really quick video for me to release sort of thing, but I don't know, whatever, man. Drop a like for me, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I'm assuming you are subscribed if you've made it this far into this video in particular, but hey, maybe I'll gain one subscriber from this video because you actually double checked and you were like, wow, I thought I was subscribed. So you hit that button, you know, to that one person out there. Thank you for subscribing. But yeah, that's going to do it for this video, guys. I have been Trevor. I go by the Mr. Trails and I will catch you guys next time on a probably cohesive topic.